Crispy, hello. It's hard to say if the story is pearl clutching enough, but it's definitely made my first D&D experience interesting. I'm a newer player and got into D&D recently because I had a group of friends over Discord who just wanted to fool around and have fun. We had been friends with the Dungeon Master for around three years, and the group was pretty close. It was me, the Tiefling Cleric, DM, the DM's partner, who is Aarakocra Monk, the Dungeon Master's schoolmate friend, a human homebrew jester, and one of the Dungeon Master's friends, the Dragonborn Rogue. We had planned for a mini-campaign quick adventure as a placeholder for the upcoming campaign DM had planned for once she graduated. I was as excited as it would be my first introduction to Dungeons & Dragons. I know, cleric for my first character? Bonkers. Honestly, hot take, you can learn any class if you just, you know, sit down and read the damn book, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, nope, no, nope, not even gonna try. I had no clue what I was doing, so I was just following along with the other players. There were a few red flags I should have picked up on, including that I was the only one taking notes, including the Dungeon Master. I kept notes so the DM could remember the town we were staying in. Obviously, I thought nothing of it because, again, I was new to the game. Also, we weren't using any sort of maps or character sheets, so it was just, screw it, we ball. Another red flag that should have caught my eye was the fact that the DM's partner was given so much leniency throughout the whole campaign. This wouldn't have been a problem if their partner was an absolutely insufferable. She was playing in our cocker, but in the most irritating way possible. She refused to talk. She would only squawk in our face. The battle is over, but our comrade, no, say it ain't so. I'm sorry, your brother is dead. Voltaire will always be missed. I will carry his memory with me forevermore. I will always miss him. What of you, Alec here? Have you any fond memories of- <gasps> What of you, Alec here? Have you any fond memories of- ah! Thank you <clears throat> for your Ow! input. Ow! Not only that, but she'd also aggro every single person we came across. You know what's funny about this? It wasn't even any combat. In the whole month and a half we played this game, not once did we fight. I felt like a babysitter the whole campaign, with my character being the only one who took anything somewhat seriously. I was the only one to clean up any messes the Three Stooges made in an attempt to keep us on track. It took us five sessions to make it out of the starting city, so needless to say, the campaign fizzled out and everyone stopped showing up. I can't say I was overly disappointed, as a month or two later, I found an amazing group. At least this one had a good ending, though I will say, the horror part of this is something new. We've seen a lot, but bird squawking in someone's face? Yeah, that's new to me. I'm gonna keep this short in details because my dungeon master is social media famous despite his style. Oh god. <laughs> you guys, this better not get me in trouble. I swear, alright? I don't want to end up on drama alert today. I really would rather not! What is up? Trouble alert. For context, he claims to have years of experience as a dungeon master and regularly posts about his games. But none of that matters because his style is bothering the other players per their private messages. He does whatever will make his life easiest, rather than what will be the most fun for the players and the dungeon master. So for example, a number of spells are banned because he'd have to rethink the enemy's strategy. None of the enemies, not even really the smart ones like wizards, cults, armies, etc. None of them have strategy, they especially don't run away, unless the module explicitly states that they would. That makes combat incredibly slow because no one is fighting like they could die any second, despite the fact that we've already had a player character death. Hey, by the by, that's probably why he's got banned a bunch of spells. Like, most player character OP builds fall apart if the dungeon master uses any sort of combat strategy. Basically, SKILL ISSUE! All of the enemy roles are done in real life, despite the fact that we're doing them online, and thus, it would save him a lot of time on math. It would require him to just use a different VTT. He basically never intervenes in player interactions, which means pointless arguments or single player slash NPC roleplay can take hours to resolve, and yeah, I timed it. Most of the descriptions, like spells, map-based environments, sound effects, it's all done by the players. Every death also ends in how do you want to do this, rather than just the impact ones. 
there has been one point of inspiration given out, which sounds nitpicky, but this is a game where the Dungeon Master specified that good roleplay would be rewarded. And from my perspective, there's been a lot of excellent roleplay between the characters. If a player misses a session, you best bet that another player is going to be playing two characters. This would actually be really fun in another context, but here it seems like a symptom of a larger problem. Speaking of, every player has to fully resummarize the previous session every week. So every week, I have to read seven other summaries of the previous session in the chat. As a whole, I'm 100% staying in this game for the other players, but golly, if I don't want to say something every single time, it feels like we're the Dungeon Masters paying someone else to read us the module, so... Wait, paying someone else? This is a paid game? Oh god! <laughs> Alright, here's the payment for the game. Thank you for your patronage. Uh, so are we gonna start, like, the Session Zero soon? Or are you gonna prep the campaign? How is this gonna... Yeah, well... I was just thinking you would do it. You want us to do all the work? I'm paying you! Well, I mean, sometimes Dungeon Master needs help. I mean, it's a lot of work to be a DM. I need help from the players sometimes, come on. Look, I, I get that. In fact, I love it when players and DMs collaborate on the game. That's what makes a great game. But, like, if I'm paying you for a service, at the very least, I, I don't think I should be doing the majority of the work if I'm paying you for the freaking service. Look, do you want me to be real with you? I would love you to be as real as possible. You're a crispy, I'm a crispy. Hey, wait, what are you doing? We're not supposed to break the fourth wall in the sketch. Nag, focus. You're a crispy, I'm a crispy. And do you know what all crispies want? To kill each other? No. It's to play Destiny. No, no. Yes. I, I don't, look. <laughs> You are supposed to be prepping a campaign for us to play. And like, I get DMing is a lot of work, but- Or? No, no, no! Okay, yeah, this is pretty fun. I know, right? It feels like we're Dungeon Masters paying someone else to read us the module so that we can describe, propel, and motivate everything rather than having a narrator help us along in our journey. He did implement a feedback system, but it's been made clear that the feedback will not affect anything he doesn't want to hear about, especially his Dungeon Master choices. I've learned compliance is the best path in these situations, that's why I'm hoping for anonymity. If he does hear this, I hope you understand, I just don't feel safe coming to you. All you ever do in feedback is shut us down about allowing material that's already published. How do you expect us to bring things up when we think your style needs work? Now, I will say, while there are some things here that would absolutely frustrate me, a more minimalist DMing style is not invalid. It's not my style, and it's not something I would enjoy. I think it's too far down the line from something that I would have fun with, but it is something that some people want to engage with. A dungeon master who largely sits back and lets the players do completely whatever they want. <laughs> but while there is a valid style, not everyone is gonna like that style, and frankly, there are things here that I don't think are great in any style. Most notably, this dungeon master apparently can't take criticism. All the other stuff is fine in some contexts, but not being able to listen to your players to the point where they feel afraid to come to you, whether it's because of social media cloud or just because of pure stubbornness, I don't know, but that's not a good thing. Look, I'm sure this Dungeon Master is great, but they're not great for these people. And these people and the Dungeon Master need to have a conversation that goes both ways. These people need to talk, and the DM, they need to listen. Hey there, Crispy. Been watching as I got back into D&D, and watching you brought back some memories of my first Dungeons and Dragons group back in college. Honestly, I haven't shared much about them, and maybe they are even that much of a horror story. Yeah, I know. But might as well throw it your way. I had a friend group doing a custom <laughs> fourth edition. Look, I've given it some thought, and my favorite D&D book of all time, Flea Mortals, being based on 4th edition, does not absolve it from this running gag. Nothing is safe from the gag! That sounds sexual. Okay, wait, we gotta stop. <laughs> yeah, 4th edition campaign, sophomore year of college. I figured I've always wanted to try D&D, so I sat in on a session and decided to join. Over time with this group, I realized this group wasn't great due to some things I dealt with. My first character was maybe cheesy, but I liked him. He was a thieving rogue that saved his town by stealing from capitalists and giving back to the people. So when I first joined and was interested in incorporating a story of saving the town again, my dungeon master loved it. A mission was set up for the group to travel to the town and battle an incoming invasion. 
of slime. We got to town explore and set for the encounter. The battle happened and was fun and I enjoyed it. It seemed like it went really well. That was until after the battle was over. The dungeon master did a few rolls and told us, so there was about 50 civilians who were killed. What? How? Back undead scum. Yes, we have claimed victory and driven back the undead menace. Indeed. Not one of them got past our surefire. What, what the, the hell? hell? You there, citizen? What happened? Well, some some undead got past your defenses and um, burned down the entire village. Half of our population is dead. We will never recover. And it's all your fault. No, they definitely didn't. Like, we, we killed all of them. We're like, a hundred percent certain. How did the building catch fire? I encourage you to tell the truth. Okay, well, well, maybe... Maybe, um, one of us. A few of us. Uh, we, we, we got scared. And we went binge drinking, because that's what you do when you get scared. And some of us spilled the alcohol into... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The fire. Made fire bigger, and, well, you know... Do you want to kill the rest of them for the sake of natural selection? Yeah, honestly, that sounds like a good idea. How did that even happen? When we easily got rid of all the slime. Right now, I feel like my character is being punished over nothing, but back then, I just thought I had to accept uh, harsh realities. Either way, the death of a large part of the village demotivated me to use that character, and I retired them that session, opting to use a barbarian with just barely any backstory. There was another player who was a bit of an issue. He had some sort of Spider Queen warlock character and controlled a few big spiders. He made it clear that the Spider Queen was overly attached to the spiders. Okay, fine, I assume that's just a character quirk. That is, until all the spiders died in a small battle because, you know, they're spiders and have very low health. The Spider Queen was apparently devastated, and the player exclaimed, Great, now my character- <laughs> The death of the spiders was her 13th reason why, baby. I think this was the moment where I realized many of the people in this group were problem players. I spoke up and snapped to him and told him I was really not okay with the way he was being. I don't know if I handled it right, but he did end up making a new character as a result, and stopped a lot of issues. In another campaign where another player became a dungeon master, the dungeon master from the original campaign became an issue. We were trying to get to a building, but we were being pursued by guards. As we got to the building, our characters tried to make a strategy for dealing with both at once, until the original dungeon master decided to act on his own. He told us he was going to open the door to the building, close the door, and lock it. You know, preventing us from getting into said building. Completely perplexed, I asked, why would you do that? And I got the famous phrase we love to see, it's what my character would do. I think this happened and was the final straw for me, and with that campaign fizzling out, I decided to stop playing Dungeons and Dragons with these guys. There's a few other stories involved with the group, like when another player tried to hit on my first character's wife, but at least I had her kick him in the groin and it got a good laugh. Ah <sighs> uh, yes, the best way to deal with a problem player. A kick in the Kenobis. <laughs> there was also the fact the original campaign became homebrewed, where that original dungeon master decided to double the amount of skill proficiencies for whatever reason. I didn't really get to play much D&D for another four years after this group, mostly due to the pandemic. Right now, at least, I'm in a really good 5th edition campaign for the last year, playing my lovely Owl and Life Cleric, and the people there have been not much of an issue, at least compared to my first group. Hopefully, this will be the last of the horror stories in my life. Yeah, I say that every horror story I experience, it never seems to work out, but hey, maybe you'll have better luck. Okay, couple problems. Having things happen in the background while your characters are battling is fine, but killing a large population of the village when the players are themselves doing really well against the enemies is silly. The consequences should match what is happening. If this slime invasion is clearly something the players can't deal with, maybe the players would try a different strategy, like evacuating the village, for example, to save more people. But I doubt the DM did anything like that, considering the players thought they did really well in the combat, and I believe that. I think the dungeon master wanted a consequences of war moment, but it doesn't hit when you have this glorious victory, and there's no foreshadowing to your actual defeat 
and loss. The minor problem player behavior is less severe. You got a warlock who said a very inappropriate comment, and yeah, those slip sometimes, and a dungeon master who just abandoned the rest of the party, which, yeah, that sucks sometimes. <laughs> Overall, you got a bunch of fools, and I'm glad you found a group that's a lot better than these guys. Hello, this is a campaign I am still in actively, but considering leaving for the reasons to follow. Important people, Dungeon Master, 17, female, and the problem. Horn, who's 24 female, and a half satyr, half winged tiefling druid. That would be... Whew, that's a friggin' overdone design right there. I'm playing a half-orc barbarian. There's also two kobolds, or kobolds, though I highly doubt you're referring to the metal. They're 17 and 20-something. And a changeling, 18 years old. I think it's important to note this is my first game, and this is my first ever dungeon master, though she's been playing for 10 years and is running a module... <sighs> Horde of the Dragon Queen. It doesn't matter, you can have fun with whatever you want. I just think Horror the Dragon Queen is my 13th reason. <laughs> Sorry. All right, look, they did add content for the characters' backgrounds. We started at level one, but because Dungeon Master was running the same game for another group of players, the Dungeon Master decided we would be playing in the same world at the same time, but didn't tell us until after session one. So DM started us off in a level five to seven area. Level one. At first, everything was fine. We were set up. My character was a middle-aged half-orc whose wife died when their village was attacked by a dragon. He tried to make a deal with a god to save her, but the god tricked him into a contract and his wife was dead. Great. There was a three-hour one-on-one call, but we never did a session zero. You know, I don't know if a crispy needs to be executed over this. I think one-on-one -on -one session zeros are fine, though I do prefer the group ones now. What's your opinion on that? The first session comes, and they completely ignore several of the other players in favor of the changeling. One of the players, after a nearly four-hour session, only talked to me twice. They were a close friend of mine in real life and ended up just dropping. With the very little time everyone had, we couldn't do anything, and we're stuck doing whatever just pushed the changeling along. The next session, we run into a Dungeon Master player character, a DMPC, an important plot character who is level 7 in our party of level 1s. She destroyed the four drakes that one-shot us because she forgot to scale what we had to fight in the cave, which, yeah, god, guard drakes are CR2, perfect for level 1s. Yeah. The Dungeon Master never has to roll because the DMPC lived here, so she knows where to go and knows all the traps. When we finished the cave, our druid was given a homebrew item called the Druid's Bag at level 1. Everyone else got an item that gave plus 1 certain stats that, for some, didn't even fit what their character needed. So the druid, by the end, got two drake eggs, which hatched next session, a druid's bag, and a new best friend in the form of the DMPC. After that session though, we were all level 3. We go into town, it's been destroyed, most of the town's been kidnapped, but don't worry, the other party went after the missing villagers. My character offers help to rebuild the houses, and the dungeon master thinks it would be fun for them to argue with me over helping build the houses back to stop bandits because we want them to come back and rebuild their own houses. And when my character logically argues they were taken by a dragon, there is a chance no one's gonna come back at all. She just had them argue for five more minutes, and at that point I was getting frustrated, and her DMPC steps in and is like, I know they are safe. I can sense they will come back. Yeah, the OP makes a good point about the villagers maybe not coming back because the dragon killed them, but also, even if the dragon didn't kill them, the argument that the DM is making is awful. Yeah, I know you just got kidnapped by a horrible draconic beast, and we had people volunteer to help rebuild your homes, but... Nah, we think you should do it. Get back to work, you lazy peasant. That's like mustache twirling supervillain crap, man. I asked her after the fact if that was written in the book, but no, it was on-the-spot roleplay. Throughout the entire campaign, we have to go along and agree with the DMPC. We have no choice in anything we want to do, and are often forced to use the information our characters wouldn't know because we can't progress otherwise. All the while, Horn the Druid was treated as the golden child and gets all the items or the NPCs are only nice to her. The last session was the worst now. In four to five sessions, we've only fought two times up until that point, and we were level five. One of our players is kidnapped by a level 12 
second DMPC, who is literally the same as the first DMPC personality-wise, and the Dungeon Master admits they have a lot of abilities that boost her up even more. After two players nearly died permanently from one fireball, guess who knocked her out after I did well over 60 damage with a nat 20, the max damage plus the rolls. You guessed it, it was the first DMPC who did it. We are yet again forced to deal with the second DMPC, and even though we tied her hands and feet and were not talking and keeping an eye on her the whole time, she managed to slip through all her restraints without us noticing. No roll, no hints, no nothing. The Dungeon Master just kept making comments like, Since you as players hadn't noticed, let's see if your characters do. You still haven't noticed, you still haven't asked. What are you gonna do with her standing up? We couldn't do anything! We nearly died! I was on one health and was the only one who was able to do damage to her in the first place! Then, the second DMPC just drops my whole backstory. No build-up, no roleplay, nothing. I had talked to her about how I wanted to keep that whole thing a secret, how I wanted my character to tell my backstory to the other players. She was telling my character's story without me. Stuff that my character hadn't revealed from the last sessions, and she had rewritten some of how the plot would go without telling me. <sighs> Damn it. Just finished me off. You know, the spell reminds me of when you were younger. When your mother took you to a distant land so that far away you could learn the ways of magic. What are you doing? Um, uh, you know, after trying to kill you, I'm telling everyone your entire backstory. My whole backstory? I, I didn't even know my whole backstory! And why are you talking about it? Uh, well, you know, I hear things here and there. Dude, we were just trying to kill each other. Why are you talking about my story? Uh, well, you know, you're dying, so I might as well do it. Anyway, I'm getting to the good part. You know, the part where your entire family dies and... Huh. She fell for one of the classic blunders. Never start a monologue with somebody who... Doesn't really give a crap. Anyway, I need to get back. <gasps> anyway, as I was saying, the drifter managed to kill You're your father and mother. In None of the other players got this treatment. Their backstories had been revealed in parts so far well enough, and nothing huge was given away. Then, of course, Horn the Druid's character is again given greater healing potions by the DMPC, and this new second DMPC is nice to her and loves her. There was so much building up, and it feels targeted for them, because the others are getting thought put into their characters, and their characters are all being respected. But because mine is grumpy because his wife died, that's an excuse to treat me like trash. Not during the session, but in the call afterwards, they talk explicitly to each other, and talk and joke about their intimate lives. Remember, most of the group is either underage or well over the legal age, which is a combination of words you never want to see together. It's like saying arcadum and good person. <laughs> see, I can't do it, it's just not possible. The dungeon master takes away literally all agency. She wouldn't let my character refuse a healing potion and would just throw it at him. A context, since my character's a half orc, I thought it'd be cool if he thought scars held, had like deep meaning and refused magic to heal the scars since it's traditional to let the scars heal naturally. She completely ignored that and was just like, this is a special potion made for orcs that lets scars heal faster, but still naturally. This was written into my backstory and she just wanted to mess with me. Everyone else in the server has been friends for a long time, and it feels like I'm the main one being targeted by these changes in the story. I broke down crying mid-session because she completely ruined my character, and I used to love my character. Now, I'm waiting for him to permanently die so I can leave with no drama. I say, you just take the drama and leave, dude. This group suffers from the click problem. Not click like clicking a mouse or click like the YouTuber. I mean click like this click. Like high school click. Look, it's okay to have a friend group. For God's sakes, I've got a friend group. I play D&D &D with my friend group, primarily. But if I was to invite someone brand new, I would need to be aware that they don't have all of our in-jokes and they need to be accepted. 
and to a degree catered to. Me and my friends hang around each other very naturally. A newcomer might feel alienated, and that would suck, especially for a game like Dungeons & Dragons. In this case, though, not only is this person being alienated, but in a lot of times, they feel targeted. It almost feels like they're a rube to be bullied. That is no way to treat someone, especially a new player. And that's ignoring all the weird stuff with DMPCs and just bad DMing in general. Rough, man. Don't wait for your character to die. Just leave yourself. Hey, that's a wrap. If you guys enjoyed, then you may enjoy a previous episode of D&D Horror Stories where a DM wanted to show off his alpha combat experience. That's linked up in the cards and at the end of the video. I think you guys would love it. But before you go, please do leave a like and subscribe to Crispy's Tavern so you don't miss any of our content as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down in the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment to DMPC so let me know you made it to the end of the video. Hey, by the way, if you have your own horror stories, you can send them directly to us. There's an email down in the description down below. Send your stories our way for a chance to be featured in one of these videos. But, hey, even if no any stories, and that's like, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Farewell.